Ngukesibe umba tani. Uma china ipeke, umnune, unone. Ama fafa. Hingu li mbela zima kesibe. Rufe fenomchana, ikao. This is the story of Espinaka. I'm from the Eastern Cape. Um, in a small town called Butterworth. But I grew up in Cape Town. I came to Cape Town. We relocated uh, to Cape Town 18 years ago. Me alone, when I came in here, my mother was still in the Eastern Cape. So I was the first person in my family to be in Cape Town. When I first arrived in Cape Town, I was with uh, a relative. So I came and uh, we stayed with a relative and um, life was not good. I started selling, selling clothes, my aunt's clothes. So that's where my entrepreneurial skills came from because I was selling, coming from school, selling clothes, going to outskirts of, 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 of Cape Town. That was not something I wanted or something I needed um, when I was in that situation. And by that time, I didn't know it was a training. I didn't know it was more of me having to be trained for the dexterity of entrepreneurship. After that, you know, I rebelled. I said, no, you know what, let me go and find myself a place, you know, let me go and live with someone I, I do not even know. So I went to Bella, there's a place, um, some squatter camps in Bella, when you go to Bishop's Le Bishop Levis. Um, I went there to live with a friend, you understand, that is informal settlement, there's no even electricity. It was never an easy life, but it was a life that was actually preparing me to the person that I am today. And my lifestyle was not healthy, you know, the way I'm living, my, the activities I'm actually exposed to, which was more of like drugs, you know, like smoking dacha, drinking a lot of like uh, beers. When we have money, you know, we go to, 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 to other places and find, you know, other things that... <laughs> Yeah, life was so tough, you know, life was so tough, life was so tough, really, really tough. I sat down and like, uh, what made me to come to Cape Town from the first place, you understand? What is it that actually got me to where I am now. I, I realized when I was like this, this person who was rebelling, you know, um, drinking a lot, um, you know, going out with people. Yes, I was fine because I was just living life like any other person, but uh, my attitude and my behavior was not as good as any other child, you know, would have. I felt that I'm tired of being like, looked like that. I'm tired of people having problems when they, when, whenever I'm, I'm around. Because when I came in here, I just told myself that I want to actually change my family. I want to make sure that my family is well taken care. I even like actually gave me a new, gave myself a new name, you know, that I would be Jongi Kai, you understand, to take care of my, 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 my family. The health landscape of Kailicha includes and contains high carcinogens, the substances that actually produces cancer and other cardiovascular diseases. The air we breathe makes us who we are in terms of the health. What we have in Kailicha is a crisis of chronic issues and cardiovascular diseases, which derives from eating unhealthy, you understand, because there is lack of health education. People are not conscious. We haven't been told why should I eat healthy. So it becomes more of a problem because, you know, the food that we're eating today becomes our enemy. Food is life. And at the same time, it becomes death. So if food is not actually consumed properly and prepared properly, consciously, then it becomes death. The idea of Espinaka came when I went to volunteer in Mapongwana Hospital, seeing the fact that there was a dying need for me to do something else, to actually even change myself. So then I went to Mapongwana and that's where I volunteered. I became an assistant of a nutritional advisor. So that's where I learned 
educated myself on what is it that makes these people to, to, to be unhealthy. What's funny is that I didn't even have any background of food science or food technology, but that didn't actually hinder me from achieving my goal and dream. My dream was to change the society and the environment of Kailiche, to change the perception and stereotypes with regards to healthy eating and healthy lifestyle in the townships. Working in Mapongwana Hospital, I then learned solutions on how to address health issues. There were a number of solutions, but there were no producers. One of the solutions that were addressed to the people was the type of breads that was recommendable as alternatives to be eaten. But there was no bread that had vegetables. There was no extraordinary bread. There was now, you know, a bread packed with nutrients that will actually boost the immune and the system of those people who had issues. I then came up with a formula to combine spinach and bread. After creating a formula of a spinach bread, I then started by realizing that I need to actually, you know, start baking. I started with only 40 rands in my pocket. Some of the ingredients that was that were at home, um, living in a shack, forced my mind to think about the solution on how to start baking when I do not have an oven and capital to start this. It was after, you know, um, such a long time of waiting for financial assistance and, you know, assistance from other people and stuff, when I started by baking in a neighbor's oven, using the neighbor's oven and the 40 rands to bake the first four breads. I was so happy, excited. I had, I, had, I had the world on my hands, you understand? Because for me, it was a dream. So two lessons came out of the situation. The first one is not always a good option to wait for financial assistance or funding to start something. You gotta come with creative solutions to start what your dream is. And secondly, invest in time. Educating your market, highly important. Educate them, tell them what to do. Started selling and the demand grew. People were liking the bread. I was selling in about 25 days. I was sitting on about 100 loaves. So that was huge for me, baking from a neighbor's oven. I then like realized that I needed to actually approach someone, a big retailer, who has the capacity and the spare capacity of what I need. So I negotiated with them, I sat down with them and I told them, you know what, um, this is who I am, this is the dream, this is the product, first of its kind, and it needs to be diffused, it needs to be out there. Every hand should have the spinach bread. So the directors of the retail company were kind of impressed with the product. That led them to actually spare me capacity of their bakery, to use their bakery efficiently, resourcefully, like trying to make sure that we, 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 we leverage the resources together in aim for me to expand my brain. Through creative solution, I was then able to get my potential competitor to allow me to use his resources. And that is the power of maintaining and creating relationships. Through the time I was at the retailer, I was then able to grow the company very fast and by actually getting their systems, replicating their own systems, models, and ways of doing business. Yeah, operating from a local retailer and um, for quite some time, for a couple of six months, and um, they changed their production schedule, which affected the business. And um, from there, then we decided to actually stop for a couple of two months because um, the, the schedule affected the business and we actually made a huge loss out of that um, adjustment of that schedule. 
What I learned from that is that in business, you have to be, be open to, uh, to, to, to adapt and be flexible. Even if people treat you badly, but you gotta make sure that you maintain the relationship for future purposes. After the phase of not operating for two months, we then realized that we need our own facility. As now you can see, like what we have here is an express bakery, green express bakery of its kind, first of its kind in the township. Not only in the township of Kailicha, but um, in South Africa at large, you'll never find a green express bakery even in Soweto. So what we do now, having our own um, facility, we have capacity, we have volumes, we have like machines, serious machines, at industrial ovens, we have our own proofers, we don't need from a bucket, we don't actually even like uh, bake from a neighbor's oven. As we started, we just bake from our own, we have volumes, capacity, we can bake about 120 breads to 300 breads a day. Um, we supply here local surgeries like hospitals, um, we supply coffee shops, we supply individuals with diffusing this bread door to door to people in our community and it's working, it's a working mechanism. As we're looking at it now, we will actually grow within a short space of time. We wake up every day in the morning, two o'clock, we're up and running, we're baking, of which we, we, we didn't have that um, opportunity when we were operating from another man's business you know so for now i mean for us now we have you know something big and 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 the dream is coming through i went from a guy who left butterworth with nothing to a guy who's now living a legacy for his family and for his community now i say to you Umbatani, umachina ipeka, umbombo zoni, ufafoluti, ingelimbele sema kusebi, numchana ifani, ulufefeli kam.